I'm so sorry guys, I doubted him. I doubted him. What do dogs and coffee have in common guys? Well, it's something that I like. Both of them I like very much. If you guys enjoy coffee and dogs as much as I do, make sure you guys keep watching this video as I react to rescuing animals while enjoying coffee to see whether they're the real deal or not, whether this is a fad, whether it's something that we can learn from. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a thriving small business and a profitable food business. If you enjoyed these type of analytical videos, these videos where I just break down whether they're the real deal or not, then go ahead and smash that like button because that just shows me and Jason this is the type of video you enjoy, so then that way I can create more of this for you. Now, let's dive right in. Twenty percent of the profits back to animal rescue organizations. Interesting. I wonder, you know what, these things oftentimes it just I just don't sit too well with me because it just feels like a gimmick altogether. I don't know if it's the real deal or not, but for me, I'm just like, why am I working so hard? Why am I selling my home, my furniture and everything just to create a coffee shop just so then that way I can give away 20% of my profits? I don't know. It's just probably not something that I would do, but. I view a real successful and viable business over the next 50 years being a company that is addressing concerns in the communities. And I love what I do and I love helping animals. And if you can make it as a viable business, then it's, it's even better. I found her at a random little adoption in Santa Monica in 2012. I was just going to breakfast and saw some Dalmatians and little brown and white Dalmatian crawled in my lap. And the next thing you know, uh, I was leaving PetSmart with a thousand dollars in pet supplies, a new best friend and no breakfast. You know, she opened my world to animal rescue and, and she's always been right by my side. That's actually really cool uh, because, you know, I have a very close friend of mine actually rescued the dog from Thailand, flew her all the way from Thailand to Vancouver, and now it's part of our best friends too. So definitely can relate to this. I started the company just kind of first conceptually, like, you know, how can I make a difference? What, what are some lateral solutions to helping with animal rescue? Once I had a general concept and I thought a viable idea, I felt like I had to do something and I wanted to get after it right away. I was, you know, on student loans. I was living in a little $700 rental home. Didn't have income, didn't have money. And I just started thinking about like, all right, well, what do you have? And I said, well, I got furniture and I got clothes. Then I have uh, the old internet. And I was like, well, I can sell some stuff online. So I started selling my couches and bookshelves. It just kind of kept getting us step by step a little further. I, I have a different view when it comes to trying to provide help. And there's many ways that you can help something or support a cause. Uh, and it all comes da back down to your basic needs first being fulfilled. And if you do not, and if you cannot even take care of yourself, how can you have the ability to take care of other people? It just doesn't work. So I truly believe in being able to establish yourself a little bit more before working on things that you're more passionate about and more uh, driven to that has a mission. Uh, I am not doubting Jordan at all. I'm just sharing my philosophy and it's okay if you're building a business to make money. There's no shame in doing that. Um, yeah, I truly believe there's no shame. And on top of that, it doesn't mean that the only way you can support organizations and causes and mission is through monetary values. You can actually invest your time in mentorship, doing volunteer work, um, raising funds through pop-up events. There's so many different other ways to do so other than to sell all your furniture, just to create a coffee shop and to give away 20% of their profits. I don't know, I really don't know. Eventually we progressed far enough down the road that one of my professors coincidentally was part of the founding team of Keurig and had an interest in coffee and I pitched him the idea.
So year one, we went live with the website. We did about 100,000 in revenue that year. Oh, wow. uh, the following year, I was wrapping up grad school and we had a little bit more emphasis on growth. That year, we jumped up to about 350 in revenue. The last year, I think we finished around 700. And then this year, we're on track for about 1.2 million. I'm so sorry, you guys. I doubted him. I doubted him. And that's the reason why I wanted to share with you my thoughts before I actually watch this. Over a million bucks selling coffee. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm so sorry, Jordan. Great job. We've done it from a, a bootstrap position, but we think as we keep growing and as we keep making an impact and our company grows, that we could become you know, one of the more significant or more important companies in the space of animal rescue funding. The Grounds and Hounds, I think we're gonna to continue to evolve as a business. Uh, we're creating more products and we're really using feedback from our customers to deliver more products that they want. And, and we're continually trying to make a better cup of coffee. We'll do whatever is necessary to help improve our impact in the animal rescue world. So if more people want to engage with us and be part of our mission, we're going to try to find ways for them to be involved. Um, and that's always kind of at the core of what we do. So hopefully we just continue to evolve with the customers who love us and uh, bring more people into our community. I... There's two points that I want to make. First of all, Great job, Jordan, great job. Um, first of all, when we look at numbers like this, right, this is my skepticism, really kind of my, my spidey senses coming out. When we think about coffee and dogs and stuff like that, we're just thinking about like, hey, you know what? These, this guy's selling coffee, making a million dollars in revenue. Really, honestly, I don't think it's as simple as that. And obviously with a three minute interview, he has to say basically, um, the, the, the short version of what he's doing. And he's not really diving into the details. So if we can actually understand a little bit more about his business model, to dig a little bit further into, hey, are they doing any kind of like online direct to consumer selling? Are they doing any wholesaling? Uh, are they doing any collaborations with other businesses? This will allow us to have a better judgment of whether uh, this is a great business or not. So I came to a conclusion with what I'm watching, but if I were to do a little bit more digging, I would look into these aspects to see whether it is actually a good business or not. Um, oftentimes, we see what other people are doing, have these soundbite moments, and all of a sudden, we're just like, wow, that's a great idea. For example, dogs and, co and coffees, great hook, but now we have an impression knowing the fact that, or thinking of the fact that, you know what, dogs and, co dogs and coffee is a great business idea, they make over a million dollars but without really understanding the nuances behind and under the hood of what truly is happening. So definitely we do not want to make these assumptions and really dive deeper into what is making this um, business successful. Second thing that I want to raise is the, the reason why they're so successful, I truly believe is because of their mission. By them identifying something that people can relate to, people who are dog lovers. And dog lovers tend to have this really big community sharing with others, dog lovers, um, what they do on a regular basis. What are things that they would actually do with their dogs? And this is a very tight community that only the dog lovers would be able to uh, feel included with. And being able to actually tackle this and from this angle is such a smart and I feel strategical move on his part. So I don't know. I, I think, um, I think I'm, I might be reading a little bit more into this. I don't know if I'm just being a skeptic, but you know what? Great job, Jordan. Uh, you definitely are the real deal making a, um, over a million bucks selling coffee online or selling coffee with uh, grounds and hounds. So there you go, guys. Real deal. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys would like more of these reaction videos of me seeing my thoughts on these types of other businesses and stuff that we can learn from it, we can pull stuff we can learn from it, share with you guys so you can take these lessons, what other people are doing to apply it into your own business. Then make sure you guys 
smash that like button. Go ahead and smash that like button. It shows us that this is the type of video you enjoy. So once again, we create more of this for you. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.